In late November 1941, 30 warships were anchored in a cold, desolate, and utterly remote bay at the northern fringe of Japan. Almost none of those aboard knew where they were about to go. When he heard, one pilot called it a suicide cruise. It seemed preposterous they could sail 3,000 miles and arrive undetected. People joked they would receive huge medals posthumously. Aboard a destroyer, Sadao Chigusa thanked his wife with a letter. He enclosed a snippet of hair. As Japan receded below the horizon, he assumed he would never see it again. The commander of the American Pacific Fleet was husband Kimmel, a handsome, confident man with a blemish-free record of 40 years. He had read a report by one of his officers that Japan might, without first declaring war, creep to Hawaii and surprise the fleet. But Kimmel did not think much of Japan's abilities. Not many Americans did. He did not believe, for example, Japan could make torpedoes that would work in shallow water. And Pearl was indeed a shallow harbor. On December 7, as he watched the Japanese prove him wrong, he wished aloud a bullet had killed him. There were so many residents of Japanese descent on the island that Takeo Yoshikawa had no trouble spying upon the Kimmel and his fleet. He blended right in and was never caught as he sent regular reports. On December 6th, he had told Tokyo that no American planes were scouting and there was no sign Kimmel suspected a thing. He added, there is considerable opportunity left for a surprise attack. That fateful morning, two lowly army privates were manning a small radar station on the north edge of Oahu. The device suddenly spotted a horde of airplanes. The planes were coming directly toward them. One of the privates wanted to do nothing. It was, after all, peacetime. But the other, George Eliot, insisted they call headquarters, which they did. They were told not to worry about it. It was peacetime, after all. Finally, there is William W. Outerbridge. Outerbridge had taken command of his very first Navy ship on Friday, December 5th. The very next morning, he began his first patrol, keeping watch in the waters just off Pearl Harbor. And the very next morning, December 7th, he and his destroyer spotted a midget Japanese submarine. Without hesitation, the new captain did precisely what he should, sinking the sub and radioing Pearl with a warning. It was just before 7 a.m. The Japanese attack planes would not arrive for another hour. No one reacted with alarm to Outerbridge's message. If anyone had, history might have been entirely different. 